and welcome to The Voice of America in Washington, D.C. I'm Aisha Tanzeem, and I'm privileged to have with me today Rahila Ahmed. Rahila, is that how you pronounce your name? Most definitely. And let me tell people before I talk to you that next November, when everybody will be watching the presidential election, Rahila will be voting for the next U.S. president and for herself. Right, Rahila? Because she is running for one of the largest school districts in the country as a member of the school board, as one of the youngest Americans to run for such a position. Uh, she is still 18, and you have won the primary. Yes, um, and you actually beat your opponent by 10%, if I understand. And you ran a really uh, interesting grassroots campaign. First, tell us. What gave you the idea of running for the school board when you hardly just graduated from school yourself? Well, you know, I've been through the school system for my entire academia in Prince George's County, which is the county I'm running in. Uh, so that was a whole 13 years of experience that I've seen the school system, and I've seen uh, some of the things that I'd like to improve upon and some of the things that need to be changed. So I'd love to implement those uh, different changes and be sure that um, we have a good education system for our students, and that's big driving force for me at least. So can we call it like democracy at work? They just taught you about elections in, this, uh, in your civic class and here you are running for elections and you start voting at 18. Yes. You're actually running for an election at 18. How, at 18. How's the experience? You know, it's been very exciting for me. Um, my dad is actually very politically active as well. So um, I was helping him with his campaign when he ran um, before in 2010. Um, and that experience really showed me the beauty of our democracy and wow. it inspired me to run this time as well. Um, I think that uh, learning about the democratic process here in the United States is a very enlightening experience and I'm glad to have had this opportunity to go and talk to different people in my community to see what the issues are. Um, it's just been a very great experience for me and exciting as well. And you went knocking on doors, yes. didn't you? Did people say, my God, you're too young to run for anything yet? You know, a lot of people, they didn't have that initial reaction. They, even if they did, they didn't tell me at least. Um, but most definitely when I came up to them, they definitely were uh, okay with hearing what I had to say. And based upon that, after the entire conversation, they would say, you know, you don't seem as young as, as you are. And I, I take that as a compliment because it shows that I know what's going on and I'm more than just um, my face or my age. Now, Rahila, you come from, as you describe yourself, a Desi background. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me about your parents. Where are they from? Well, my mom is from Pakistan. Um, she moved here when she was five years old to uh, Washington, D.C., uh, and then she moved from there to Prince George's County um, in, while she was in elementary middle school. And then my dad, he's from India, and he moved here when he was in his 20s. Um, so both, both of them have been very integral um, or very been, you know, helping and, me out and, and, and how much in this uh, process of that as well. influenced your upbringing? Oh, most definitely. Both of my parents are, I love them. They're just very amazing, very supportive of me in this race. And a lot of people, um, you know, ask me, why, why do you think you won? And I think my parents had a lot to do with this because they were so supportive and they were very helpful to me in providing me the opportunities that I needed to succeed. Do you describe yourself mostly as an American or as a Desi, since your parents are from Pakistan and India, two sides of the border. Well, you know what I have to say to that is I, America is my home, and I can't imagine myself anywhere else, but I also can't imagine myself without the culture that I've been raised in and brought up in. So they're both two very important parts to who I am as uh, a person and as Rahila. So I think they both play very important roles in my life. Um, but for me, uh, America is my home. Now, Rahila, I see that you cover your head. Mm -hmm. Now, there was a report that came out by Amnesty International yesterday that said in Europe there's a lot of discrimination. Uh, women who cover their head have a harder time finding jobs, even going to colleges. Mm -hmm. What's been your experience in America? You know what, I'm so thankful to live in this type of a community where uh, it's so diverse and I'm very privileged to have the support system for my constituents um, in this race. You know, I didn't uh, expect to do as well as I did, but I will not take those votes for granted. I know that um, I'm very proud of the constituents in my area to have voted for me, knowing that I cover my head, knowing that I'm not um, from originally culturally from this country um, in terms of, you know, I'm Desi, but I was born and raised in America. Uh, so I'm very excited to see that everyone here is very accepting of me. Um, so 
I feel bad for the European Muslim Americans there, but for he, me here, you know, this is where I, I feel like I was meant to be. And American Muslims have had problems. I mean, we've had organizations like CARE who've pointed out how some women were fired because of headscarves and had to go to court. What was your experience going to high school when people are so looking to belong and here you are different from other people? I think the high school experience is all that you make it out to be. So for me, I was very confident and I knew that when I was going to high school that I would start wearing the scarf and I stuck to it and whenever people asked me questions, I knew what my response would be. Um, I think showing that confidence and showing that you're comfortable with yourself is something that people appreciate and um, that is really what helped me um, in picking up the scarf in high school. So you did actually start in high school, yes, not before. Ninth grade, yep. uh, was it your decision? My decision completely and I think that's what made it so much easier for me to address those questions and those concerns from my classmates and uh, from people in the community because uh, this was a decision that I made on my own. Does your mother cover her head? She does. She does? She does, okay. but I do have other family members that are a little bit more relaxed about that. So I've seen both sides of the spectrum and um, making my decision um, going in, I knew all the facts and all the pluses and minuses that would go into that dis type of a decision and uh, I weighed the benefits and, and they outweighed the And what negatives. in your eyes were those benefits? The benefits, you know, I think wearing the scarf, it really gives you uh, an outsider's view on yourself. So it really keeps you in check in terms of, you know, you're able to see what you're doing right and what you need to improve upon yourself. So for me, it's it really provided me an outside perspective and it helped me not fall into the peer pressure as much as um, I feel like I would have if I had not put, uh, put on the scarf. So um, it definitely helped with the peer pressure aspect as well as helping me develop my own identity and that was very beneficial. Now you were in high school at a time in the last few years when uh, a lot of people say anti-Muslim emotions in U.S. have actually grown. We had the Ground Zero Mosque controversy, we had you know several, we had the Times Square bombing and yeah. uh, did you feel any impact? For me, you know, I actually did a research project on this very recently so um, I think that when people come up to you and see you, they might have that initial hesitation, but when they get to know you and you talk to them and they talk to you, they understand that um, the things that radicals are doing is not uh, mainstream what the religion is, is teaching. So I think having had um, interaction with Muslims like me in the schools, it helps people to kind of be aware that the issues that are being faced are not universal or, or the uh, you know, the problems that we're having with the terrorists and the suicide bombers, they're not um, universal to all Muslims. And so I, I'm glad that I can be that face for those people to make them understand or help them understand Islam in a better light. Let's get back to your school district. Mm -hmm. uh, what made you decide to run? I mean, you, here you are passing high school. A lot of people are thinking, which college are they going to go to? What's going to be their major? You know, what career path? And you say, oh, no, I'm going to run for the school board. Yeah, you know, the school system, the school system has given me so much. They've given me numerous opportunities. I was in the science and technology program in high school. Um, I was in TAG in middle school and elementary school. So I've been having a, a great education process, and I had some great teachers as well um, to help me through that process. And for me, it's I want every student to have an impactful teacher, an impactful education that's going to help them in the future. And, and what difference can you make? What will you bring? You know, having gone through the system, I understand that every um, decision that I make is going to have an impact, an impact directly on the students and, and how the teachers. Will it, how will it affect your studies? Are you planning to go to college? How are, how are you going to balance that? I'm in college right now, actually. I'm at the University of Maryland College Park, um, and I'm studying business there. So um, I really enjoy that experience, and I, I understand the value of education, so I'm determined to continue there with my undergraduate and then go on to graduate school afterwards. And you're going to balance the school board responsibilities with that? Yes. You know, um, with this entire process of the campaign in school, um, I've been bal balancing it very well, and I'm very um, delighted to have such a wonderful team uh, supporting me and helping me in these endeavors. So um, I intend to continue that forward motion on to the general election. How many students in your school district are from Indian or Pakistani or South Asian background? You know, I don't have the exact number, but there are uh, quite a few, quite a few, especially in um, 
the schools that I've been in, they've been a very uh, heavy Southeast Asian population there. Um, and, so. and how many students are actually politically active? Like you seem to be you're very into yeah. things and you want to make a change. Are there many like you or are you one of the nerds? Uh, yeah. my <laughs> using no, that yeah, word. I'm pretty nerdy. Okay. I'm pretty nerdy, but um, yeah, there are not a lot of politically active um, youth, especially not in high school. You know, that's like you said before, that's not something that a lot of people are thinking about when they're in high school. But I've seen on this college campus, we've actually been going through elections, SGA elections at the University of Maryland. And um, in that type of environment, the voting atmosphere is much more um, promoted. And I'd love to see more youth um, active in politics or active in at least, you know, doing their civic duty in voting. So I hope that um, my being here and running for office will inspire high schoolers to get involved in politics and government as well. And have you seen any difference with your class or your juniors? They see, mm -hmm. oh my God, Rahila's running, maybe we can help her with her campaign or something? Oh yeah, I've definitely had a lot of support from uh, my former classmates, the classmates that um, are in high school right okay, now. Okay, what I want to find out is who were the 50 people who went door knocking for you? Were oh they your goodness. classmates? A lot of them were. A lot of them were. A lot of them were the people that um, I worked with at the University of Maryland and the various programs I'm in. Um, a lot of them were from organizations that I was in in high school. Um, so, and then we also have family friends uh, and even people that constituents that I've met on the campaign trail that have been helping out with this process as well. So I'm very, very pleased to say that I have a very diverse group of individuals from different locations and organizations. And you will be on the same ballot that people will go to vote for the President of the United States, oh, right? Oh, yes. You know, his name or their name will be at the top and you will be on the same ballot. Are you also going to be involved in political side of the campaigning, the actual uh, presidential election process? Um, I will be voting in the presidential elections for sure. You know, I understand the value of voting, so I'm definitely going to be sure to uh, vote in the general election for um, that position. And do you have a favorite candidate? Do I have a favorite candidate? I don't know if I, am I allowed to say that? I don't know. I mean, but it's your choice. I mean, if you don't want to say it, that's fine. But okay. if you do have a favorite candidate, <laughs> you're I do totally... have a favorite, but let's not you're being... express that. <laughs> express that. It's okay. Very political. I know. Do we see a politician in the making then? <laughs> you know, I, I oppose the idea of, of being like a career politician. I don't think that that's something I want to do, being in office for a large number of years, because I think, you know, at least for me, if I'm in an office for that long and I'm not able to make a, a significant difference, then maybe I'm, I shouldn't be in there and let new blood come in. I'm very much um, pro new blood. Um, I'm very young myself, so I, I, I like that approach. Now, uh, let me come back to another idea of uh, do you see that the American society is becoming more integrated or is it becoming more hostile towards different cultures? Post 911, here we are more than 10 years later mm -hmm. and we still have issues. Yeah. Uh, have you seen things get better or worse? Well, for me, I think the exposure to different cultures really helps in bridging that diversity gap that we have. Um, but not all Americans have that opportunity to be exposed to different cultures. So I think that's one issue. I think um, in order to bridge that gap, it just needs to be, there just needs to be positive communication uh, flow between uh, people of different cultures, and that will enlighten others to understand um, the differences that are in each other and embrace those differences. What are some of the most common myths people have about you as an American Muslim, seeing you with a headscarf. What, what's the question that comes up again and again? You know, a lot of people, they just, it's interesting because I don't get that question a lot. I don't get that question of, um, you know, American or Muslim, even okay. though I feel like, you know, that may be in the back of people's minds. Um, I think after speaking with me, they understand that it's possible to have both identities in one person. Um, so I appreciate that and I understand that. But there are a few people that um, are concerned about the, the issue only because of, I think, um, the negative spread of, of Islam and Muslims in, in America. Are you the youngest ever school board member in the U.S.? If I'm elected, I'll be 19 years old. So I will not be the youngest, but I'll tie. Okay. Huh? So there's, there's been another 19-year-old school board member in the past? Yes. It's actually um, that 
person is actually an incumbent in my district. Um, so he's running for re-election in this campaign, but he was elected when he was 19 years old. And was he a popular board member? Yes, he actually received 67% of the vote in this uh, primary election. Um, so that's, you know, two-thirds of the population is thinking that he's doing a good job. So. Well, wonderful. That's good to know. Now, are you, do you follow issues in mainstream media, in politics, especially issues related to Islam, Muslims, immigration, you know, South Asians? Uh, sometimes, you know, I, I try to keep track of, of um, basic things that are going on, especially keep track of the news, but education is really my passion, my focus, so I make sure that I keep track on the different improvements and changes in education, especially on the state and local levels. And do you watch Bollywood movies? Oh, of course. I love it. <laughs> which, which one did you watch recently? Um, you know, I, I'm a big fan of Three Idiots. I know that's, you know, I, I, that's one of the ones that I keep watching over and over again, and I'm, I never get bored of it because it has such a good meaning and such a good message behind it. So I love that. The most recent one, it would be hard for me to think of. Oh. Do you go to Pakistan often or India for that I, matter? I've been to India numerous times. Um, the last time was probably in 2008, so it's been a while. But I've never been to Pakistan. I've wow. I've never been, yeah. Wow. Uh, are you planning to go? I hope so. Sometime in the future, you know, as long as... Um, I have the, the, the time and the availability to go, I would love to go. What was your experience uh, of India like? I loved India. You know, with India, we have a lot of extended family there, especially from both my mom's and dad's side of the family. So it's always nice to go and visit the roots of um, where my parents grew up and to see the population there and how it's changing and um, just to, to revamp the cultural um, investment that I have. In India so I love that I love going to India so what are some of your favorite programs that you would like to introduce in the schools in the school system I feel like um, we have a lot of different smaller issues that play into the big effect of why some people may think our schools are failing um, for me um, my number one thing is communication I think that we definitely need to bridge the communication gap between the school board members and the school system with parents, with teachers, with students, and then also with other elected officials. So um, we have elected officials on the county level, like the county council members, the county executive, and then also the state level, which is the state delegates and senators. So I think until we bridge the gap between both ends of the spectrum, um, it's going to be hard for us to make any forward progress as a county. So communication is definitely my number one priority. Now, you were born in America, but your parents were both immigrants, mm -hmm. first-generation immigrants. Do they talk to you about what they went through and what it was like for them? My dad does talk about it a lot, um, but he doesn't reflect as much on the past as what he wants to do for the future. So he, he kind of tells me, you know, Rahila, you have these opportunities, you should take them, and this is how you can do it, this is how I can help you. They're very much supportive. Both of my parents are very supportive in helping me trying to find my way in America. And I'm sure you'll do a great job finding your way. We see that you're balancing education with helping with the school board. I really wish you good luck. Hope you get elected and we have you back here again explaining you, what it's like. We have Rahila Ahmed with us, who is one of the youngest, one of the two youngest ever school board members. We hope she gets elected in November when everybody will be voting in her district for the school board members while they're also voting for the President of the United States. From the Voice of America studios in Washington, D.C., I'm Aisha Tanseem. Thank you for watching.